Okay, so here's my very first video. I'm pretty excited. 14.3 <laughs> factors affecting salvation. Uh, salvation is another word for dissolving. Um, so we're going to look at these different factors such as temperature, pressure, and polarity. Um, and then tomorrow we'll be able to explain the different factors that affect solubility as well as calculate the pressure solubility using Henry's law. <clears throat> now, when substances dissolve, likes always dissolve likes. If a substance is polar, it's going to dissolve polar substances. If it's nonpolar, it will not dissolve polar substances. So always likes dissolve likes. Polar, polar. Nonpolar, nonpolar. Um, so if we look at this example, what really happens is the whole process of salvation, these solvent particles, these blue particles, they surround the solute particles, these red ones. They surround them and then they uh, pull them off the crystal and they eventually form this aqueous solution where these blue water molecules, they pull out these red molecules from the crystal and eventually it gets smaller and smaller and the whole thing dissolves and we are not, not able to see the solid anymore. <clears throat> so as I said, likes dissolve likes. Water is a very polar um, solvent. It's got this oxygen molecule which is very negative um, because it's very electronegative and pulls all electrons to this side whereas hydrogen is very not or not very electronegative so the positive solute particles are attracted to the negative pole of water and the negative solute particles are attracted to the positive pole of water <coughs> so if we have sodium chloride down here what happens when it actually dissolves well this oxygen, which is very negative, is attracted to the sodium, which is very positive. So it's able to rip off the sodium or dissolve it using the partial negative to pull off the partial positive of this ionic substance. So I can actually show you this animation. Uh, pretty cool. Um, so here it goes. So. As we can see, the whole process of salvation or dissolving, these water molecules are starting to surround this molecule and start to rip it off one by one. So if we take a close-up video, close-up view, we see that these hydrogens, these white molecules, are getting attracted to the chlorine and ripping it off. So chlorine, negative, very electronegative, and the hydrogens, which are positive, are surrounding these and this forces of attraction between these two are greater than the forces of attraction between sodium and chlorine. So it, this water molecule is able to rip it apart and it dissolves. Now if we look at the other one, oxygen, which is negative, is going to surround the sodium ion, which is positive, and be able to rip that apart. And now that becomes aqueous or dissolved. Um, it's pretty cool. Eventually, once it's completely dissolved, we have this whole new dissolved substance. We're not able to see any um, salt anymore. It's it's gone. We can't see it. So it's pretty cool. Um, oops. Um, okay. So there's a couple different things that we can increase the dissolving rate. Um, in order to increase the, the, increase the dissolving rate, we must increase the number of collisions between solute and solvent particles. The following are a means to do so. So, number one, agitation, which is kind of like stirring or shaking. Um, it will increase the surface area by breaking the solute particles into, or into smaller pieces. So, sodium chloride, if we swirl that around, if we take a stir rod and swirl that around in water, um, it's moving around a lot faster and it has more collisions with water molecules so the water molecules have more chance to interact with the sodium chloride and kind of rip it apart. <coughs> Another factor is usually increasing the temperature um, but that only kind of works for solids. It never works for gases and only works for some solids. <coughs> um, so solubility. How much of a solute 
will dissolve in a certain amount of solvent at a certain temperature. So substances that are very soluble will completely dissolve, such as this um, kind of bluish solution we have over here. Everything's completely dissolved. We, it's clear. It could be a solution because it's dissolved. Um, however, this substance over here, we have this precipitate, this pinkish, reddish, pretty color, pretty color um, it, it doesn't dissolve, so it has low to no solubility, or insoluble. <clears throat> now, as I've already said, likes dissolve likes. So the polarity of solute and solvent. Um, nonpolar substances like nonpolar substances. Polar substances like polar substances. So if we have some aqueous solution, aka water, water is a polar solvent. <clears throat> so if we put a solute that is polar, polar and polar, that will be soluble. If we put something ionic like sodium chloride and put that into a polar sol solvent like water, it will also be sol uh, soluble. Ionic substances are uh, like kind of very extreme polar molecules, I guess you could say. Um, they're usually salts. And if we have a nonpolar solute, if we put that in a nonpolar solvent, we'll get it, that will also be soluble. However, if we put a nonpolar solute into uh, water, which is polar, it's insoluble. So, likes to dissolve likes, that's the only way it's going to dissolve. <clears throat> the second factor that affects solubility is temperature. Most substances become more soluble as temperature increases. Um, however, one thing that's not that's not so true is um, gases. They actually become less soluble as temperature increases. And that's because as gases start, <clears throat> as we increase the temperature, they start moving a lot faster. And once they start moving faster, they have more energy, and they're able to escape the solvent. Um, so gases, they become less soluble as they start becoming more and more fast. But um, substances such as like water in which we heat up water, we can actually, <clears throat> since water is able to heat up, the particles are moving faster and they collide more with sodium chloride and it has more chances to kind of rip those particles apart. So temperature usually increases solubility as far as solids go, uh, liquids. Now the next one is pressure. Uh, this one kind of really only affects gases. Um, so gases become more soluble as its own pressure increases. It's kind of like a pop can. Um, when we open a pop can, um, a lot of times you hear that pressure release because they want to increase the pressure. So they have this can and they start increasing the pressure and then they seal it off so that the carbon dioxide is able to dissolve more in the pop and we get this carbonation. However, when we open up the pop, the pressure decreases and eventually the carbon dioxide starts escaping and eventually our pop becomes flat and it doesn't taste very good anymore. Um, but um, pressure actually has no to little effect on solid and liquid solutes. <clears throat> now, um, with pressure, we have this uh, equation called Henry's Law. And it states that pressure and solubility uh, are <clears throat> directly related at a constant temperature. So, when the temperature remains the same, if we increase the solubility of a substance, it's going to increase the pressure. Actually, more vice versa. If we increase the pressure, the solubility will increase. Now, if we decrease the pressure, such as opening a pop can, the solubility is going to decrease. Um, so, as I said, S1 over P1 equals S2 over P2. A refrigerated can of 7-up has a solubility of 4.85 grams per liter and an internal pressure of 207 kilopascals. What will the solubility if it is open at 101.3 kilopascals of pressure? <clears throat> so the first thing we have to do is we have to identify what, what we have. So, the very first thing we have, this 4.85 grams per liter, that's solubility. Remember this unit, 
grams per liter, that's really soluble. Um, really solubility, so that's S1. Kilopascals, we should remember that this is pressure, so this is P1. <clears throat> now, what happened when the solubility will be if we opened uh, at 101.3 kilopascals? So, as we open this can, the pressure decreases, and we get P2. So what will the new solubility is? Now remember, we said this was a direct relationship. So pressure decreased, solubility should decrease as well. <clears throat> so using Henry's law, S1 over P1 equals S2 over P2. Now we want to get S2 by itself. So we're going to times each side by P2. And these will now... <clears throat> these will cancel out on this side and we now get S1 here let me erase this now we now get S1 over or S1 times P2 over P1 equals S2 <clears throat> so if we plug in S1 and P1 and P2 into our equation we'll be able to solve for S2 <clears throat> So, but one thing first we gotta remember is we have to always use our units. So, <clears throat> here's our unit over here, kilopascals. This will cancel out with this kilopascals, and we'll, our new unit will be grams per liter. Now we have to use grams, we have to use our units. Um, otherwise, we're gonna mark them wrong. So tomorrow when we come to class and practice these, I expect you guys to show your work and also show that you have your units and cancel out your units that you used to have. So our new solubility will be 2.37 grams per liter. Like I said, it's a lot lower than this solubility because the pressure also the pressure decreased, so our solubility is going to decrease. <clears throat> okay, so that's it for today. Uh, I'm going to class tomorrow and prepared to work with uh, these problems, and um, we'll have a fun lab. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.